This presentation is called Redundant Words and Pictures, Accessibility and Superficiality in Early Batman. In this presentation, we'll look at McLeod's concepts related to the interplay between words and pictures and the different effects that the different tactics, tactics that the creators use. We will look specifically at Batman, early Batman. We're gonna look at the, the first Batman comic was 1939. And we'll draw some conclusions about the way that this comic uses words and images, words and pictures. So what does McLeod say on the ways words and pictures combine in comics? Well, one thing is he says the different ways in which words and pictures can combine in comics is virtually unlimited. And then he goes on to create a number of different categories of different ways. I'm only gonna include two here. The first one I'm gonna introduce here is called interdependent, where words and pictures go hand in hand to convey an idea that is that neither could convey alone. The idea there is that one without the other wouldn't give you the complete picture of what we need. So both are necessary and both carry significant meaning. The other one, which is our focus for today, I introduced the first one more as a contrast. Um, so the one we're looking at today is duo specific, duo specific panels in which both words and pictures send essentially the same message. So those are characteristics um, and classifications by McLeod. So let's see how that plays out. So here is one page from first Batman comic. And I wanna just take us through this fairly briefly and due to time, maybe only a few, a few panels. Um, so I will start here again in the interest of time, looking at this panel here, the, um, the first one on the, the second line here. And it says the Batman lashes out with the terrific right. And then we have an image of him lashing out with the terrific right. Then the caption says, he grabs his second adversary in a deadly headlock. That's what we have the image of. And then with a mighty heave, continued to the next panel across the panels, uh, sends the burly criminal flying through space. And so what we see here is in this, this section here, it's, the, the images and the words are saying the exact same thing. Uh, he, he, you could do away with the words, you'd be pretty, pretty good. And same thing with the images. Uh, so they don't really add anything. They're just sort of maybe backing each other up. And then the last panel I wanna look at is just this one here, which says the Batman swiftly picks up the paper that the murderer stole from Stephen Crane's safe. And the reason I wanna just quickly speak about this one is because uh, on the one hand, this is doing the same exact thing as the previous ones we discussed, because it's taking the, um, it's just describing what, what's being done in the image. Um, one of the things that it, it does do is it reminds us through language where that paper came from. You could track it through the, the panels and, re, and remind yourself that, but because it tells us in the language, ah, it's the paper from Stephen Crane's safe. We're reminded of that as as um, as readers, so that uh, it makes it easier to follow the story. We don't have to flip back and forth. Whereas a more complex narrative may not do that, and it would leave the the reader occasionally uh, getting lost and having to sort of reread material. But this does not do that. So our our Key question here is how does this technique affect the storytelling, aesthetics, and reader experience? Well, the main ways, and I can actually just put the language up here from the conclusion, the main ways are that it's more easily digestible for readers, right? We don't get confused. If we don't quite understand what the image is doing, we can see the language that supports that and vice versa. Um, many other comics, more complex ones will, require some skills on the reader's part to figure things out. And there may be room for ambiguity. Uh, 
but there's not a lot of ambiguity here, which can be very good for readers um, in the sense of clarity and not losing focus. On the other hand, it may lack storytelling depth. So we don't see the images are adding anything new. So we can't get another layer of depth in the story as we might with something that was doing something a little bit different, a little bit more creative. So those are the key takeaways from this analysis of the Batman comic using McLeod's concepts related to the interplay between words and pictures in the panels.